Good morning, dear friends. Greetings to all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you had a wonderful time the previous day. And um, may the Lord bless you as you give yourself these few minutes of a silence, quietly waiting upon the Lord to hear the voice of God through his word. You know, we hear God's voice in many ways. And one of the most important ways is through the word, his word, the Bible. Today's meditation is titled, The Foolishness of the Message of the Cross. And the text you will find in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, where it says, For the message of the cross is a foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross proclaims for how Christ gave his life to pay the penalty for our sin. In other words, there is a chorus that we sing. We owe a debt that we could not pay. He paid the debt that he did not owe. All because of his love for us, humanity. And remember this love always and be grateful to God. Who can resist such love? And it, this message tells of Jesus' sacrifice for us. Celebrate the life provided by that sacrifice and requires people to make a personal choice about how they will respond to Christ's sacrifice. And this is very, very important. Salvation is obtained by responding to the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. We must be aware of the price Jesus paid for our salvation. You know, it is freely given because this is the only way you and I can have it. If you try to buy it, all the silver and all the gold and all the jewels and all the precious stones and all the diamonds of the entire world will never be able to pay for the salvation. The only way you and I can have it for a loving heavenly father through his son Jesus Christ to give us free. But then to live this life, we need to pay a price, our own dedication. And we need to therefore respond to this sacrifice by making a personal choice and what that choice will be. This message involves wisdom and truth, but also God's active power to bring a spiritual salvation, healing and a freedom from a power and influence of a sin. And that is very important. That is the only way we can continually live a life that is pleasing to God. And remember, only when and if a person is free from sin and it's a hold over, uh, over, 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 her, over us, he can or we can truly say that uh, he is free or I am free from slavery. And remember, though we may not be slave physically to a foreign power, everyone who lives in sin, in disobedience to God, we all are slaves to sin and Satan. No wonder Apostle Paul says in Romans 2 verse 2, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why? Because the message of the cross is the only message that uh, gives us enlightenment to knowing the Savior and enabling us to come to the Savior for salvation. Uh, let me give you a picture of the cross 
of which Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He is referring to the cross, the tree. So what is the, uh, what is the cross? The cross is a place of utter humiliation. A place of curse in its ugliest manifestation. The cross is a place of the ugliest manifestation of sin. The cross is a place of uh, uh, revelation. How dark sin is and can be. And the cross is also a place of uh, cruelty and uh, brutality in their highest forms. The cross is a place of man's worst form of helplessness, loneliness, darkness, fear and rejection. And yet, my friends, how God could take something, a symbol of the worst and turn it to a symbol of a something best, admirable, that men and women in all nations, where uh, nations around uh, where this this cross uh, uh, cross around their neck, proudly as a symbol of the greatest faith under the sun. I hope you understood that sentence. I will repeat it one more time. How God could take something which is a symbol of the worst and turn it to a symbol of a something best and admirable that men and women in all nations wear this symbol of the cross around their neck proudly as a symbol of the greatest faith under the sun. That is amazing. That in itself is a miracle. Ever since Jesus died on the cross, listen, it was transformed into a symbol of the number one faith in the world. The cross was the place and the instrument God has chosen to be the place and instrument of the greatest revelation of what his divine love is and forgiveness is and the only means of reconciliation between God and humanity. We will continue this same meditation in our next meditation on Thursday. God bless you and remember what you have heard this morning. Think of what the cross stands for. That's why Apostle Paul said, Cursed is everyone who hung on a tree. The crucifixion was one of the commonest uh, way of Roman uh, authorities used to punish the guilty, especially those who murdered. Under this, uh, anyone who is crucified and hanging on this cross is considered to be a very cursed person. And the Bible says Jesus Christ became a curse for us that we may be set free from all the curses of sin nature. This is the marvel of God's grace. And I pray that you will surrender yourself completely to the Lordship of Jesus in gratitude and in the realization that it is you and I who caused the suffering of Jesus on the cross and death. But the power of God raised him from the dead and thus he is able to save us, we who will call on his name and put our trust in him. God bless you. This is a wonderful day to live. Share your faith with somebody else. 
and tell them what the Lord has done for you and that he is willing to do it for anyone who will acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God bless you as you give yourself to the Lord to use you. And have a wonderful day today, living for Jesus Christ and glorifying him. We will continue this meditation in our next meditation time. God bless you.